hello and welcome to today's video in this video i will be talking about plato's contribution towards dramatic criticism my name is dr nabarun ghos i am working as an assistant professor in the department of english jagjivan college veer kumar singh university ara plato was born in the city of athens in 429 bc and he lived up to 347 bc he began his career as a poet but later on in his life he met the great philosopher socrates and after meeting socrates he decided to take the career in the field of philosophy and politics and at the same time he burned all his poetic works he started taking interest in philosophy and active politics but he stopped himself and he distanced himself from active politics after the execution of socrates in the year 399 bc then later in his life he founded an institute called academy in 387 bc where he along with his disciples discussed several subjects such as mathematics science philosophy politics but he has excluded only the subject of poetry poetry in the sense literature his career is divided into three phases in the first phase he wrote books such as apology laches karmides euthyphro crito epins minor and in the second phase he wrote books such as phaedo symposium republic the second phase is also known as middle phase of his career and this book republic is the interest for the students of english literature and in the third phase he wrote sophist statesman pelibus timaeus and laws so far as dramatic criticism is concerned plato's theory of ideas is the most important theory according to plato ideas or heavenly archetypes are true and real he thought that god first uh, thought about one idea before the creation of the same abstract idea into a concrete object and suppose uh, he thought about a table the idea of a table then he created a table and so the first idea is the reality and the table the object uh, the concrete table is once removed from that idea that is uh, so the table is once removed from reality and art and artists they create and um, they create something which is twice removed from reality so the first reality is the idea once removed from the reality is the object and the artists such as painters and literary artists they they create their art by looking at the object which is already once removed from reality so first comes the idea second comes second comes the object and third comes the art that is why art is called as twice removed from reality in his book the republic plato develops the idea with reference to a carpenter a painter and a poet which i have already mentioned first he talks about the idea and a carpenter creates a table from that idea so a carpenter is once removed from reality reality is the idea and table is once removed from reality now the painter or the uh, literary artist comes and he sees the table and paints in his on his canvas so the painting is twice removed from reality the object table is once removed from reality and the painting is twice removed from reality similarly the literary artists also create their art by uh, looking at the objects in the world which is once removed from reality that's why the artist's art is twice removed from actual reality 
एंड प्लेटो बिलीव इन आर्ट फॉर आर्ट सेक ऑफ लाइफ आर्ट सेक और आर्ट फॉर द सेक ऑफ लाइफ अनलाइक द अर्ली ट्वेंटी एथ सेंचुरी मूवमेंट हुई टॉक अबाउट आर्ट फॉर आर्ट सेक Uh, as uh, writers like edgar allan poe also talked about art for art sake when he said that a poem should be read as a poem not anything else a poem per se so plato was against that idea although plato talked about this idea several years ago so plato was um, in support of art for the sake of life an artist should mold the character and the society that was the belief of plato and plato's criticism of poetry we see he had banned the poets from his ideal state because the poet is an ideal sing idol singer of an empty day in his book the republic he talked about an ideal state where everything will be ideal there will be no bad things in that society every person will contribute to the betterment of that society and then from that society he had banned poets because he thinks that uh, he thought that an poet is an idle singer of an empty day that is why that means that poet uh, is an useless fellow he doesn't have to do anything and he idly sings which has nothing to do Uh, for the betterment of a society and he thought that poetry is an imitation of an imitation which is already explained when i talked about uh, art is twice removed from reality poetry imitates something which is already an imitation the reality is the idea which is heavenly heavenly truth and objects are imitation and poetry co- poets copies those imitations so poetry is an imitation of an imitation there is nothing creative in poetry according to plato poetry enchants rather than molds the character of the individual and the states as poetry is a work of imagination uh, plato thinks that poetry and the poet enchants or beguiles or charms the reader and that's how the poet entertains the reader there is nothing rational in poetry it is only the enchanting effect that the reader enjoys and poetry deals with baser aspects of human nature poetry deals with both baser aspects and novel aspects but baser aspects that is the bad things Uh, are easily copied by the readers so the readers are more interested towards baser aspects of human nature that's why poetry leads the readers towards baser aspects and there is no poetic justice in poetry poetic justice means uh, a villain should be punished and a hero or, or a virtuous person should be awarded but in actual Uh, poetry poetry here in, in the sense of uh, the whole literature in poetry there is no poetic justice according to plato many a times we see that virtue is not rewarded the villains are rewarded and those who are great characters honest characters they are being punished in several works of poetry that's why plato uh, banned the poets from his ideal society poetry is not a safe guide as it appeals to emotions rather than reason poet uh, plato thinks in order to improve a, improve the character of a person a person should think rationally scientifically instead of thinking emotionally but poetry makes a reader think emotionally that's why plato thinks poet, poets should be banned from an ideal society because it is not a safe guide as it leads the readers to think emotionally instead of thinking rationally the place of a poet is between a prophet and a madman 
A prophet is a great human being. A madman is the worst human being. And a poet, according to Plato, stands in between. Because poetry, or uh, poetry comes when the goddess of poetry muse uh, directs the poet to write poetry, according to Plato. Plato thinks that the goddess of mu goddess of poetry muse will come to the poet and guide the poet to write poetry. That's why without the guide of muse, a poet cannot write poetry, according to Plato. That's why he puts the poets in between a prophet and a madman. His theory of poetry is similar to uh, his outlook towards dramatic poetry. And dramatic poetry, according to him, arouses baser aspects, baser instincts among the spectators instead of noble instincts. In drama, we see both instincts are uh, shown, both that is baser instinct as well as noble instincts. But people are and the spectators are more attracted towards baser instincts. That's why dramatic poetry also. Uh, like common poetry arouses baser instincts among the spectators and drama demoralizes the actors themselves the in in several dramas uh, a character who is popular as a villain he will be acting as a villain in other, other dramas also a character who is popular as a hero he will be acting in other dramas as a hero also so the person who acts as villain in uh, several dramas he develops a character of villain in actuality that's how a drama demoralizes the characters who plays the baser uh, characters or the villainous characters that's why drama is, should not be followed and drama is not a safe guide for a person in a society so these are the few aspects that plato has given which is useful for the students of english literature and in the next video we shall be talking about i shall be talking about uh, the theory of uh, aristotle aristotle's theory uh, which he has given in his book poetics thank you very much for listening